Now, Jill, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we talked about your background and experience uh, as an athlete, although I know you, you were a little modest there because you were a very, <laughs> very good athlete and I believe went to college on an athletic scholarship or yeah. at least you played uh, sports yes. in college, right? So, I mean, you were, you were a little modest there. Um, we talked about that, but let's talk a little bit now about your background in real estate. We, you know, we know that you were with Remax, joined Prudential Page, you've been about seven years. However, very quickly, I mean, you've positioned yourself both in Bristol and Norfolk counties, but also within Prudential mm -hmm. uh, as a company uh, on a very high level. I know that you've won some awards. Yes. Uh, you're on track this year to win some more awards. Yeah. So I know, again, you're being a little bit modest, but I want you to talk about the awards you've won and why you've won those and really how it impacts your clients. Yeah. Um, you know, last year I was excited to become number one in my office. Uh, yeah. It was a national award winner for the President's Circle, yeah. which, I, you know, I did that in the year last year. I've already achieved that for this year and I'm on track for the next level award. Uh, I did sell the most single family homes in North Attleboro. And, you know, the, the key to, to it is people who know Julie, they know the same Julie. Um, right. I'm consistent <laughs> and I'm just who I am and, and the relationships mean the world to me and over time again I was teaching and in real estate it started out as chore something on the side and as I realized the value of relationships which have always been very important to me that was just able to grow over time and you know at the end of the day I, I show up every day and I'm committed to it it's my passion so I love it I absolutely love what I do now Julie on average nationwide and we, you know we track, uh, track statistics here of what how realtors perform on a nationwide basis and even a little bit in Canada. And I believe right now in the United States, on average, a realtor will sell somewhere between four and six homes, maybe seven a year is the national average. Mm -hmm. How many homes will you sell this year, representing buyers and sellers combined? Um, well, I've already sold over 30 for the year so right. far. So right. I think uh, I'll be well on track to be. So uh, probably 50, 60, around somewhere there. around there. Yeah. So I mean, so. I point that out because statistically, you're gonna you're gonna sell ten times more homes mm -hmm. on average than the average than the typical or average realtor. And I've always been of the opinion that when you're gonna hire a professional, you should hire the best. I mean, there's no reason not to hire the best. I right. mean, if you're gonna hire an attorney, you know, hire one of the best attorneys you can find. If you're gonna go to a doctor, guess what? Right. You, want, you want the best doctor. Right. If you're gonna hire a CPA or a financial advisor, you want them to be really good at what they do. Right. Well, the same thing's true with real estate. You know, I think years ago people used to say, well, anybody can sell real estate, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's the same, it doesn't really matter. No, it matters. Yeah. Okay, because you were talking earlier about how you educate your clients about the special support structure that you have, that you can get people's homes sold faster than, 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 than the typical agent. You know, these are all things that are very important in the lives of the buyers and sellers. I know that you have relationships with vendors, like, uh, sure. like mortgage lenders and and uh, home inspectors, yeah. and you can organize uh, contractors, sure. you can organize all that. So there's, there's no such thing anymore in the real estate business of every realtor is the same, because right. you're not. You know? Well, and the thing that, you know, one of the reasons I love it, but one thing that buyers and sellers need to be aware, no two transactions are alike, Correct. which keeps That's it true. interesting. Yeah. But along the way, guidelines are changing, laws are changing, there's, there's financial responsibilities and legal obligations that people need to be aware of that they have. And, and you know what, whether it's an exciting move or a depressing move or an anxious move, it's emotional. Sure and, you know, I always joke that I use my psych degree in real estate all the time. <laughs> but, you know, someone who's there to say, you know, uh, committed to that process and understand how diverse it is right. and be willing to roll with all, all of it from the, you know, the subjective parts of it to the objective parts of it, you know, what's changeable and what's not. And just to know, to have someone say, I know it feels crazy right now, but this is normal, believe right. it or not. It's or, normal. you know what, this isn't right, let's bring it back to this, let's get X, Y, and Z resources yeah. to make sure we're on track for Well, that's another, I think, great point that you're making. I mean, you, you started off in uh, real estate on a part-time basis, yes. but now you're full-time. Mm -hmm. And then you can probably see a big difference in, in how you represent your clients now, Absolutely. being full-time versus part-time. And obviously, our recommendation always is to or a full-time real estate professional. Right. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of great uh, realtors and a lot of great people who are working in the business on a part-time basis, mm -hmm. but they might not be as accessible, might not be as aware of the law changes like you're talking about, right. or have access to as many resources. So it's very important that you do work with somebody who you can access on a full-time basis and has a staff right. if you're not available for, for, for your clients to be able to talk to as well. Right. And, uh, that's a, to me, that's a very important point that people understand that this is your full time. And I always like to use the word profession. Mm -hmm. This is your profession. You know? right. Julie, uh, we did some research one time, and you know, people might be surprised to hear this, but every time you successfully complete a real estate transaction, you help a buyer or a seller or both, 
Um, over a thousand lives are impacted by that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you first think about that, you might think, well, it's just a buyer and a seller and their family, but it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's thousands of lives that are impacted by what you do. Right. So, same thing with a with a doctor or an attorney. You know, li lives are you know many lives are impacted. Well. The same thing happens with real estate professionals because it's the buyer and the seller and their families. Yeah. And then they decide where they're going to work, where they're going to send their children to school, where they're going to worship, where they're going to shop. Mm -hmm. Guess what? All those lives are impacted by sure. that. And then they're also going to decide, uh, well, well, there's other people involved in the process. So there are attorneys and title people mm -hmm. and lenders, and lenders home inspectors, home inspectors, inspectors contractors, yeah. and all their families and all mm -hmm. their businesses and all their lives. I mean, it's, it's probably somewhere around two to 3,000 people at a minimum yeah. that are impacted by what your realtor does. Right. So I, I want people to keep that in mind because, you know, choosing the, the, the right realtor or the right organization is extremely important. And, and you should be interviewing... Uh, people like Julie and choosing people like Julie who have uh, resources that you probably can't get access to in a lot of other places. So.